If you've ever used a Kindle or any similar e-ink reader, you might have noticed that there's a specific appeal to it that's hard to explain. It doesn't distract you with notifications, it's really easy on your eyes. And then of course, the incredible battery life, this thing can go around 10 weeks on a single charge. But then all you can really do with this is read a book, and it also comes in this really cheap plastic body. What if you can take all that's special about this, that special mechanical feeling that comes with e-ink and have it run full Android in a really premium, beautiful, thin body. This is the Books Go 10.3. Stick around to find out more. Let's get started with the unboxing. The packaging feels pretty decent, but that should really be expected at this price range. This tablet goes for around $400 in the US and that's basically iPad territory. My first impressions are that this thing is really thin and it feels great in the hands. I'm gonna remove this plastic piece so we can take a closer look. This is really one of the thinnest tablets I think I've ever seen. And it feels great. This kind of reminds me of maybe the third generation iPad but much thinner. The backside has a uh, texture feel to it and it's pretty grippy. I like it. And then there's a plastic finish here, which it would have been nice if this was also some type of metal. But overall, this feels like a premium product. I'm just going to put this to the side so we can see what else comes in this box. We have the provided stylus and it looks like it comes with a rubber protective tip which is always appreciated but i wish the colors matched here and then we have a usb-c to usb-a cable and we have some warranty documents and a user manual before i turn it on i want to point out something that you might have noticed even though we just took this out of the box the display looks like it's already turned on and that's really the magic behind these e-ink displays the only time that they need to consume any power or use any battery is when the content on the display is being changed. So if you're reading a book, the only time that this display needs to use any power is when you actually change the page on that book. All that time that you spend reading the book, no battery is being consumed and this display doesn't even refresh. As a matter of fact, even if you could somehow take the battery out of the device, that last image on the display will just stay there indefinitely. That's mind blowing but it's also the reason that these devices have incredible battery lives. The display on this device looks great. The text clarity and visibility is better than any other e-reader that I've used in the past. But one of the major drawbacks here is that we lack a backlight. That means that you will always need an external light source when you're using this device. It's definitely not usable in a dark room and that might be a deal breaker for some people. But I think the trade-off that we get here is even more hours out of that battery. On the left side, we have the main navigation bar, which includes your library. All your latest books and PDF will be here. We have the provided store. We have a notes app, which I'll get into very shortly. We have the device storage and we have a apps page. Now, this is what really sets this device apart from everything else. The fact that we have Google Play here and we can download any app on this device, just like you would on any other Android device is really a game changer but not every app is optimized to run well on an e-ink display but there is a provided tool that you can use to optimize third-party apps so that they can run better on this display which we'll also get into shortly you might have noticed that we already have some ghosting happening on the display which is very common on e-ink devices the previous image has not fully cleared up and you can still see some of it on the background the software on this tablet will eventually clear it up and it's pretty customizable how often you want it to do that. But you also have the option to just clear it manually from down here. It's a very handy tool. When you start a new document in the notes app, you can choose whether you want it to be a handwriting or a text. You have the option to connect a Bluetooth keyboard to this device if you want to, but we're going to go with handwritten. And then we have some very useful provided templates that we can choose from, but we can also add a custom template if we want to. So this is the main UI for the Notes app. On the top, you can select from a variety of brushes. You can set your brush settings. You can even select a color. Now the color will not be visible on this device, but if you choose to export the files, then it could be a pretty useful feature. You also have an eraser on the top. You have an undo and a redo feature, as well as your page selection. Writing on this device feels incredible. It's the closest thing to paper that I've ever felt. 
You don't have that sliding on glass feeling that you would get on an iPad. The texture at the tip of the pen feels very grippy and it's, it's really a joy to write on. On the left side, you have your main toolbar, starting with the template tool, which allows you to change the initial template that we selected when we started the document. You have your layers tool, which is very similar to what you have in Photoshop or Procreate on an iPad, where you can select different layers for your project so you just have more control over the document that you are creating. We can also change the canvas size that we're working on. And then you have the shape tool and if you hold your stylus on the icon you will have a more detailed contextual menu that you can select to change the settings of your shape. We have the fill tool which does what it says, it just allows us to fill in a color. We have a text tool which pops up the keyboard on the device. And then we have an array of AI tools. The first one is called Shape Perfection, and it basically allows you to create a more defined shape if you hold down your stylus while you are drawing a circle or a square or a triangle. You have the Scribble Arrays, which allows you to scribble to erase something, and it works most of the time, and it works pretty well when it does, but sometimes it just does not recognize that I'm scribbling something. We have a recorder, which is pretty handy if you're in like a class and you're taking notes. We have the Insert tool, which allows us to insert images, attachments, we can link to notes, to files, even to a website, and we can even add a timestamp. We have the lasso tool that you can use to again select something on your layer and move it around, change the size, do whatever you want with it. If it's a text item, you can even press this AI icon on the top and it will basically convert your handwriting into text. And then you have the page tool which you can use to add new pages which then you can navigate from the top right. The provided PDF reader is also very powerful and has a set of handy tools and also a few quirks. You can use your fingers to swipe to the page or select from the arrows on the toolbar on the right. You can also use your stylus to annotate while you read. I just wish there was an easier way to undo something. It's maybe similar to some apps on the iPad where you could double tap to undo. The stylus provided does not have an eraser on the back. So for me to just simply undo, I have to first select the text tool on the toolbar which then sort of moves everything to the top. And then I have a new set of tools, which includes the undo. I just wish there was a quicker way to do this. There are also some AI tools here and some work better than others. We have the same shape perfection tool that you have in the notes app. There's some pretty handy highlight features. You could circle to highlight and you can underline to highlight. And as you can see, they don't always work, but they do work most of the time. You could also change your background and text color from either white to black or just have it be the original color of your document. The app page gives you access to some pre-installed apps and all third-party apps that you might download from the Play Store. Now, like I mentioned, not all apps are optimized to run on this display, but we have a provided configuration setting that we can change depending on the app that you'll be running. You could select from these four options. You can leave it in normal for apps that mostly display text. This will give you the most clear detail and text, but then animations are not going to look good. And then we have the speed mode, which is more suitable for scrolling, but it gives you slight ghosting. And then we have the A2 mode, which again is heavier on the animation side, but then you even have heavier ghosting. And then on the very right, we have the X mode, which has a lot of loss of detail, but is suitable for browsing websites and apparently playing videos, which I would not recommend on this device. Now I've been using this tablet daily for around a month now, and I've only charged it once. The battery life is incredible, and that really makes the trade-offs like the no backlight worth it in my opinion. However, I did notice some standby drain. When I'm not using the device and I just press the button on the top to set it to sleep, and then I check on it like a couple hours later, I, I notice a little bit of drop in the battery. But there is a power setting that you can change called the power off timeout, which will basically turn your device off after a set time. Now this will mitigate the issue, but then you have a new trade off because it takes around 20 seconds for this tablet to turn on. So you will have a lot of time wasted each time that you want to turn it on. Now I don't think that's a great trade off and I wish that they would fix this issue through some software update. So all things considered, 
is the BooksGo 10.3 worth dropping almost $400 on? Honestly, it all depends on how you take notes. If you're someone who naturally reaches for a pen and paper, I think this can be a perfect digital upgrade, providing a similar feel to what you're used to with many great added benefits like cloud syncing and the searchability of your notes. But if you're someone who prefers taking notes on a keyboard or typing them out, I doubt this will change your habits or provide much value past the initial novelty. Thanks for sticking around. If you enjoyed this, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.